What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah Moore Parties. You can find my written work and my running back rankings for Dynasty Leagues, Devi Leagues, and Rookie Drafts over at NoahMoreParties.com. And we are back today with more rates and reviews of your Dynasty Trades. I got like a dozen of them on deck. We'll see how many we get through. But if you would like your Dynasty Trades to be included in a future version of this video, follow me on Twitter and then uh, reply when I, I tweet out requests for trades. But uh, for now, let's get into it. The first trade we have here is from some dumbass named at sexy pats on Twitter in a 12 team half PPR super flex league. He gave up the 110 in his rookie draft, the 108 in his rookie draft, and a 2024 second for Chris Olave and Jalen Warren. You know, more or less, I like this trade for Mr. Sexy Pats. Chris Olave averaged 13.2 points per game last year. The other rookie wide receivers in the last 10 years who scored in that range within half a point per game of 13.2 are Terry McLaurin, C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross St. Brown, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, and two disappointments in Chase Claypool and Martavis Bryant. But that's a pretty damn good hit rate for guys who are that good as rookies. And basically what, what Mr. Uh, Sexual Patterson gave up to get Chris Olave was the 110, which is what? Will Levis, uh, Dalton Kincaid, somebody like that, and the 108, which is your third choice of that like solid four-man tier of rookie wide receivers you're probably looking at you know zay flowers jordan Addison, or quentin johnston in that area plus a 2024 20, second for whatever that's worth i like pivoting off of you know those those dart throws at the end of the at the end of the first round for a relatively sure thing in Olave who could see big bump in production and big bump in value just like guys like CeeDee Lamb, AJ Brown, Tyreek Hill, you know, Calvin Ridley had after their rookie seasons. Olave looks to be on a similar trajectory, fairly even trade value-wise, but I like upgrading your dart throws to a Chris Olave, get a Jalen Warren in there as, you know, a Najee Harris handcuff. I give that trade a B. The next trade here is from some other dumbass on Twitter named Sexy Pats in a 12-team Superflex League with tiered PPR, which is a key piece of information for this trade. It's like half PPR for wide receivers, full PPR for running backs, 1.5 PPR for tight ends. Uh, he gave up Travis Etienne and he got back Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown I give this trade an A. I, I love this. I, I really like pivoting off Travis Etienne, who just got Tank Bigsby added to that running room in, or that running back room in Jacksonville. I don't believe that Travis Etienne is some sort of, you know, 70% opportunity share, three down workhorse, do it all back. He's a decent pass catcher. He's an explosive runner, but I think he's a guy that you want. It, it, it's no knock to him. Most guys in the league are like this, but he's a guy that you want to supplement with other players who can do some of those same things. So ETN doesn't have to do everything because he's not quite a do it all back, even though he has a decently well rounded skill set. On top of that, Travis ETN scored at 12.1 points per game last season on like 255 touches. Like he was. The guy in that backfield, especially after they moved on from James Robinson, he was the guy in that backfield, averaged 12.1 points per game, was like, what, the RB26 or something in fantasy on a points per game basis? And this is 1.5 tight end premium. Uh, Mark Andrews hasn't scored less than 12.1 PPR points per game, even ignoring tight end premium. Mark Andrews hasn't scored less than that since his rookie season. So you probably upgraded production-wise from ETN to Mark Andrews while also getting Hollywood Brown on top. This is a beautiful move. A, good job, Mr. Sexual Patterson. The next trade we got is from some guy named Dynasty Maester on Twitter. 12-team Superflex, half PPR. He gave up a 2026, 2026 second-round pick. Got back Rashad Penny and a 2024 third round pick. This is another smash. This is an A+. Odds are your Dynasty League isn't even going to last until 2026. You might as well trade those. Like, your commissioner probably shouldn't be, in a, shouldn't be allowing you to trade picks that far down the road. Maybe 2026, what is that, three years out now? That's on the very verge of what should be allowed. But like, some, some meta game theory strategy here, like, 
fuck those picks. Most dynasty leagues don't even last that long. So you just got the potential starting running back for the league's best rushing offense for basically free with a third round pick dart throw next year thrown in. Easy, easy win for Dynasty Maester on that trade. Next, we got some guy named Slobo underscore Males in a 10-team PPR single QB league. He gave up Jordan Addison and a 2024 first-round pick. He got back Travis Etienne, Pat Fryermuth, and a 2024 third. I'm not a massive fan of this deal. Pat Fryermuth is a starting-level tight end. He was, what, the tight end 11 last year? He's not a difference maker. Like, he's not a guy that you absolutely need in your lineup. You can piece together, you know, Pat Fryermuth level production on a week to week basis in, in a redraft league. And, you know, you don't have access to the same sort of waiver wire in a dynasty league as you would in a redraft league, but you can acquire, you know, different lower level tight ends to play weekly matchups with and end up with the, you know, around the same production that you're going to get from a guy like Pat Fryermuth. And I would not be moving a first round wide receiver that we like, like Jordan Addison, who to be fair, is not a sure thing. But we like Jordan Addison. We're we're excited about this landing spot in Minnesota next to Justin Jefferson. I wouldn't be moving a first round wide receiver in a good landing spot with a good you know talent profile on top of a 2024 first round pick for Travis Etienne, who we have not seen produce as anything greater than like a decent RB two to this point. Even though he's being vaulted up into the you know the top eight dynasty running backs, I'm not a huge fan of this trade. I prefer the Jordan Addison and 2024 first side, but it's not terrible. I give it I give it a C. I I I somewhat get it, but I prefer the other end of this thing. Okay, the next trade we got here is from Mark underscore Gallegos Gallegos. I don't know on Twitter in a 12 team Superflex tight end premium league. He gave up Michael Pittman, C.J. Stroud, and a 2024 second round pick for Jamar Chase. This is an A+. Uh, I would need a massive haul to move Jamar Chase, who is one of the few, well, like three maybe wide receivers in fantasy football who gives you a really a weekly advantage over most other guys. That, like there's a ton of guys in fantasy who can score between, you know, 16 to 12 points per game on a weekly basis over the course of a season. Jamar Chase is one of the only guys who has access to like a 20 point per game ceiling um, on a season long basis. I need a massive, massive haul to downgrade from Chase to Pittman. CJ Stroud and a future second round pick is not nearly enough for me to pivot off of Jamar Chase. That's a mid wide receiver two in Michael Pittman, a you know, a talented rookie quarterback who we think could be good, but in a terrible situation with not a lot of weapons around him plus a future second round pick, that is not a massive haul. Like this is like dumping your super hot, super smart, funny, good cook, breadwinner girlfriend because you got a job offer out of state to go like manage a Sherwin-Williams. Like sure, you can go, you know, move to get a job, but you don't need to dump your girlfriend in order to do it. The next trade we got is Grant is from Grant Eldum on Twitter. He gave us no settings. So this, for all I know, this could be a three team triple super flex league with eight PPR for tight ends, but he gave up Jordan Addison and the 202 in this year's rookie draft for Chris Olave and the 207 in this year's rookie draft. So essentially he what moved back five spots and upgraded from Jordan Addison to Chris Olave. I, this is a great move. This is an A beautiful. If you're confident enough in your ability to a project rookies, like again, I like Jordan Addison. We can't be confident that he's a Chris Olave level player in the NFL. So if you're confident enough in projecting a guy like Jordan Addison and in differentiating between the kinds of players that are available to you at the 202 versus the 207, if you're so confident in those sorts of things that you're willing to pivot off of Chris Olave, like shame on you. You're not that good at evaluating talent. You're not that good at picking between the guy at the 202 and the guy at the 207. Addison could have a Chris Olave level rookie season, and this could still be a wash unless the guy you pick at 202 is definitely better than the guy you could have just picked at 207 while keeping Chris Olave. Like, this is just a completely unnecessary re-roll on Chris Olave, who you took in last year's rookie draft and was a smash hit. You're just, like, throwing that back for the chance to get the same thing in Jordan Addison plus a slightly higher uh, rookie pick uh, in the second round. Like, I don't like that move from the Jordan Addison 202 side, but uh, our guy Grant Eldham here got the other side of this thing. So uh, beautiful work in upgrading to something that's more of a sure thing. The 207 and the 202, obviously you'd rather have the 202, but our ability to differentiate between the likelihood of those assets hitting is not great. Nice deal. Next trade is from Ed Tech Services. Ed Tech 
hit me up. I have some tech services for you to take care of. Uh, <laughs> Good joke, right? In a 12-team single QB PPR league, he gave up Najee Harris, Amon Ross St. Brown, George Kittle, and the 210 in the rookie draft for Justin Jefferson and Nick Chubb. This is an interesting one. Similar to our Jamar Chase trade, but a much better haul. Uh, I'll give this a B. I think Najee to Chubb is a relatively lateral move. I think Chubb is slightly... Uh, lower valued in dynasty leagues right now, maybe like by three or four running backs. But in my opinion, that that's a fairly lateral move from Najee to Chubb, Chubb to Najee, fairly even. So this is basically Amon Ross St. Brown, George Kittle, and the 210 for Justin Jefferson. I personally preferred the Jefferson side. I think I would want a little bit more than that. But I do think this is the kind of haul where moving off of an elite wide receiver like a Jamar Chase or a Justin Jefferson starts to become worth it because you're adding multiple definite high-end starters to your lineup in St. Brown and Kittle versus our Jamar Chase guy up above who added like a fairly mediocre starting wide receiver in Michael Pittman plus a quarterback who maybe might be good enough to start for you this year and you know going forward like this is a a decent haul for Justin Jefferson um, and for our guy Ed Tech Services he's getting Justin Jefferson so I like this deal for him I'll give it a B um, but for the other guy I'd want a little bit more but I, I do understand that you know you're you're downgrading from Jefferson, but adding other high-end pieces to your starting lineup. So that's a, that's a fairly even trade there. Next, we have Lucas G 71025 on Twitter. What up, Lucas? Uh, we got 12-team, half PPR, super flex league here. He gave up Christian McCaffrey, Mike Evans, Tyler Boyd, and the 211 for DJ Moore, a 2024 first-round pick, a 2025 first-round pick, and Antonio Gibson. Sorry, Lucas, you're a cool dude. This is a D. I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. I would... I prefer DJ Moore over Mike Evans if we, you know, just compare one to one the wide receivers involved here. But that's a that's a low ceiling passing game in Chicago. I understand the Tampa Bay passing game probably is fairly low ceiling as well. That's that's mostly a wash for me, but I'll give the edge to DJ Moore given given youth. And DJ Moore is the is the like the most sure thing you're getting back in this deal. Like the 2024 first is a nice asset. The 2025 first is a nice asset. Antonio Gibson is a nice depth piece. None of those are definitely giving you anything, really. And DJ Moore isn't definitely giving you anything other than, you know, 12 points per game, probably, there in Chicago. DJ Moore cannot be the central piece you're getting back in a deal where you're getting rid of Christian McCaffrey. Like, I see the vision in, like, a rebuild scenario where you're trying to get younger trying to recruit some picks. I don't view Antonio, Antonio Gibson as having much of like a starting running back future. He'll be, you know, a spot starter here and there if like Brian Robinson goes down or if he, you know, moves to another team, he might have like a Tevin Coleman sort of career arc on his second team. But that's, there's not much there and you're just not, you know, getting enough sure things back. Like if I'm moving Christian McCaffrey, I want like a, a wide receiver who's definitely going to be like a solid wide receiver one for like a low end wide receiver one at least with multiple first round picks that I know are going to be you know I at least want like an early first round pick I don't want to trade Christian McCaffrey for a couple unknown first round picks and DJ Moore who might be a decent starter might like there's just not enough here for me to move off of Christian McCaffrey so I give this trade a D the next one we got is from Hempstead Peter in a 12 team single QB PPR league he gave up Elijah Moore, got back Kendra Miller. This is a fairly even trade by value. I would just rather have like a young running back who could step into a, you know, a productive role on a decent offense with the Saints than I would have, you know, like Elijah Moore, who's like a speculative wide receiver three type. Like I just prefer, you know, high upside running backs versus high upside wide receivers because I think a high upside running back has more upside than the wide receiver. So good good deal, Mr. Hempstead Peter. I'll give that a solid B. Uh, our next deal is Dan underscore Lou underscore in a 10-team single QB half PPR league. He gave up Travis Etienne and Chris Godwin and got back Debo Samuel and the 103. And this is a single QB league, so we're not looking at, probably not looking at Jameer Gibbs here at the 103. Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young probably are not part of this, you know, calculation here. I would imagine this is Bijan, then Gibbs, and then you're looking at JSN at the 103. So I'm treating this like Etienne and Godwin for JSN and Debo Samuel. This is a very even trade in my opinion. I would rather have Chris Godwin than Debo Samuel. Uh, I think Debo Samuel 
is living off of one elite season where he played running back half the time and scored twice as many rushing touchdowns as any wide receiver in NFL history had before or since. That's not going to happen again. He's not going to play running back at, you know, on a regular basis going forward in his career. And even if he does have, you know, kind of a hybrid role, he's not going to score that many touchdowns on the ground ever again because it's literally never happened other than that one time in NFL history. Like, it's not happening. And other than that season, he's never averaged more than 13 points per game. Godwin consistently averages more than 13 points per game. I'd rather have him than Debo. And I would rather have Jackson Smith and Jigba than Travis Etienne because I'm not positive Travis Etienne actually has the sort of ceiling that, you know, his valuation dynasty suggests he has. So this is kind of a wash for me. Like, just take the side with the players you prefer. Fairly even, I'll, I'll give it a B because it's kind of a lateral move. But I do like JSN more than ETN. I think those are the most valuable pieces in this deal. So give me the give me the uh, the JSN and Debo Samuel side here. Uh, the next deal we got is from Bow to Odell, which I refuse to do, in a 10-team. And on Twitter, this dude wrote two Superflex. If this is indeed a two Superflex league, then it, it's even more ridiculous. But if it's just Superflex, I mean, he gave up Christian Watson and two 24 firsts, and a 2025 first, and a 2024 second. So three future firsts, a future second, and Christian Watson for Patrick Mahomes. This is an A, especially if this is a double super flex league. But even if not, this is an A. You got Patrick Mahomes without giving up any elite assets. Like, you're going to sleep easy for the next 10 years while you have the QB1, you know, across that time period completely locked up. And if this is double super flex where teams in your league are starting three quarterbacks, which I guess they could be in a 10-team league. If this is double super flex, you easily won this deal. Like, I like Christian Watson. Future firsts are nice. Even a future second is a decent little asset. None of those are are elite high-end assets at all that you, like, want to bank your team's future on. And I'm absolutely not trading Patrick Mahomes to get that package. Beautiful deal by Bow to Odell. Uh, I will bow to Bow to Odell, but I will not bow to Odell. The next trade here is from... I can't even read this. What does it say? Guishalicious. Something like that. Guish. Guishalicious. I, I think I said that right. In a 10-team, half PPR Superflex League, Guishalicious gave up Damian Pierce and Calvin Ridley and received in return Travis Etienne. This is a D. I, I don't like this trade. Damian Pierce already outscored Travis Etienne last season on a points-per-game basis while playing on a much worse offense. And Jacksonville added Tank Bigsby to the backfield, who is much more, you know, legitimate competition uh, to Travis Etienne's touches than Devin Singletary, who's just kind of like a utility blahback, to, is to Damian Pierce's, you know, workload. So I prefer, you know, it's not reflected in my rankings right now. I might have to go change those, but like, I don't understand what what makes Travis Etienne a higher end fantasy asset than Damian Pierce? Like I understand the difference in draft capital. Travis Etienne was a first round pick. Damian Pierce was a fourth round pick, but Damian Pierce already survived the NFL draft where people thought he would get replaced. He's going to be a starting running back for the second year in a row now on a team with a quarterback upgrade. Like the, the Texans aren't that great, but he already outscored Etienne who was on a better offense last season. And Ridley allows you to hedge your bet here. Even if Etienne ends up being better than Damian Pierce going forward, you added potentially, a, you know, a low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two in Calvin Ridley. This is clearly the Damian Pierce side for me. You might have gotten the best player in the deal in Damian Pierce. I mean, Damian Pierce or Calvin Ridley could end up being the most valuable part of this deal. And you got two of them versus Travis Etienne, who, to be fair, also has a shot at being the most valuable player in this deal. But it's not a smash by any means, and I'm not trading those other two guys in order to get Travis Etienne. This is a D. Sorry, man. You did a bad job. Uh, the last deal we got is from Hunter Political in a PPR tight end premium super flex league who gave up the 202 and the 206, and he put uh, it ended up being Michael Mayer and Hendon Hooker. He moved he moved those picks to move up in the draft to get Devon A-Chain at the 110. This is an A. Uh, you got the best running back in the draft, you know, other than Bijan John Robinson. I think Devon A-Chain was the most talented running back in this draft in a beautiful landing spot. Um, obviously, I'm not drafting Devon Aitchin over Jameer Gibbs, but just based on talent, I think he's better than everybody but Bijan. So you got a really nice, talented running back in a in a great landing spot for his skill set for maybe a poor man Zach Ertz, Pat Fryermuth type score at the tight end position and a 25 year old quarterback who needs a redshirt year or two before he's even remotely ready to start in the NFL. Beautiful deal. Who gives a fuck about Hennon Hooker? Michael Mayer might not ever be a difference maker in fantasy football. You went up and got A-Chain. Massive upside. I love it. Hit like, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch me on Wednesday. Peace.